You're watching Football Daily and we're going to talk about the Catalans Barcelona. Mmm. What a, what a window for them, actually. Spent a lot of money, huh? Well, they spent a lot of money because they won't be able to spend a lot of money after this. Till January 2016, I think yeah. it is. Yeah. Yeah. Because so... they always stick to the rules, don't they? Yeah. The UEFA and FIFA. So they, they don't let anyone get away with stuff. <laughs> yeah, not this Barcelona team who just... They bought away all summer, yeah. Yeah, so they've obviously brought in a number of players to tide them over until then. This will tide them over. Luis Suarez. Yeah, Four, 43 incredible. goals he was directly involved in last season, scored or assisted. That's incredible. Incredible. You know, so you've got the likes of Lionel Messi that scores for fun, Neymar that, after having a pretty good World Cup, coming back from injury, and then Suarez. Yeah. That is a trio mm. that could decimate La Liga. Yeah. But then you looked at the first few games of playing the likes of Rafinha and Munir. Yeah. Two young lads yeah. that looked very, very good. Yeah. I don't know if that's going to be good for their balance, having the likes of Neymar and Suarez to come back, but they're both obviously brilliant players. Yeah, and they've brought a tennis player as well, Rakitic. Yeah, I think he's a good signing in that Barcelona obviously need a replacement for Xavi mm -hmm. at some point. Um, I think it looked like it might have been Fabregas, but obviously that didn't quite work out for many reasons. Um, but yeah, Rakitic is a sort of, he's a more defensive minded midfielder, he's a bit more combative, yeah. which I think will work for Barcelona well in midfield. Um, I think obviously the big key thing for Barcelona this window was their defence. They needed to strengthen their defence for a long time. Puyol's obviously retired. Uh, Piquet's form has been a little bit wobbly over the last season or two. So I think it remains to be seen whether uh, Mathieu and Vermaelen are going to be good signings. They're both sort of around 30 years old, so it's a little bit... Could be a temporary fix for what is mm. when they need the long-term game. Yeah, but I'd say... I'm not 100% sure their policy was right okay. in that blowing 75 million on Suarez it's almost a sort of a Galactico thing, same as last season bringing in Neymar, this season Suarez, perhaps that money would have been better spent on a top class peak centre back. Could you say that for the entire transfer window though? There's people that we thought maybe were making good investments before, were criticising other clubs like United were always mm. criticising City, Barcelona always criticising Real Madrid. And now those teams are almost, they're bought into that. Yeah, it seems like we're jumping on the spend as much money as you can to get these players and it doesn't matter how much they cost and then that's, that's a terrible it. bandwagon. I think it is, it's poor. Like Barcelona, I think they do, they, if they hadn't sold, find, say, sold Suarez, they would have had players that have come in from the youth side. They would have had like Pedro or you know the two lads that we mentioned before. Yeah. They've just come in and done well. I think Ratakic is perfect for replacing Xavi. He's completed the most passes in La Liga so far. Wow. Getting, you know, scored over 10 goals and got over 10 assists last season in La Liga, so he gives that, that other attacking option. Yeah. I think he's, a he's going to be a really good signing. Yeah. It's interesting just seeing how they say these youth mm. players who are coming through, who look so promising at the start, once Suarez comes back, you know, how's it all going to fit together? So it'll be interesting to see whether they win the league this season up against Madrid, who are having their own troubles, Atletico have strengthened so much, and see, you know, last few seasons Barcelona haven't really performed in Europe. So it'd be interesting to see as well if they can sort of if this is what they needed basically. It's amazing where the um, where some of the focus has switched within teams. If you think back to 2005 when Mourinho first moved to the Premier League, a lot of managers moving around Europe. It was so defensive in games of one nil, mm -hmm. you know, nil nils. And now look how much that shifted. And it, well, it's completely different now. Teams looking really heavy up top yeah. and arguably quite light at the back. I'd say there's a lack of world, top class centre backs in world football. The likes of Matt Hormel's Thiago Silva that you'd say the creme de la creme mm -hmm. and then there's a bit of a void mm -hmm. there needs to be some players that come through we need to get some young centre backs progressing like Bartra is quite an interesting one again yeah. so they've you know they've gone out and they've bought Mattia but maybe potentially given Bartra a bit more time mm. could you say that's because of the systems that are being played now the way teams are playing football it doesn't play so well to the centre backs it, it exposes them quite mm. a lot when you don't have a good midfielder in front and therefore teams are realising they're going to have to play that way to counter the way that the more attacking sides are playing and sometimes that leaves you very exposed we saw that with Spurs and Liverpool we saw it a lot last season when mm. a lot of centre-backs were exposed I think it, the onus is on centre-backs bringing the ball up the fence these days and you know starting creating the moves Van Hounds uh, you know he, he loves doing that mm -hmm. and it's one of those things where it's might you, you step out of position and you're gonna expose yourself you've got to you know play the ball then you've got to get back into position potentially it's that transition that some centre-backs aren't quite making properly I think Matthew and Vermaelen can do that. They are, they are ball players, so they, they work in that sense. And they also give Barcelona a bit more aerial presence in mm -hmm. defence, which is what they've been lacking for a while. Definitely. But I think just if you're going to go and blow 75 million on Luis Suarez, why not go and blow that on Thiago Silva or Matt Hall? Mm -hmm. You've obviously got the money, you've got the clout to do that. That's what they needed, that's what they should have gone for. 
And now they can't do that for the next two transfer do, windows. Yeah. So it's, it's a big risk in that for Marlon, very injury prone last season yeah. for, for Arsenal. But now he's left Arsenal, he won't be injury prone, he'll be fine. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But yeah, it's a risk for them, mate. I'm interested if it pays off. It's yeah. Interesting. Risky, but exciting, right? Mm. Yeah. So I think, yeah, like we're saying, they have the, arguably the best attacking lineup in the world, Messi, Neymar, Suarez, so it's going to be exciting at least. Yeah, Champions League this season is going to be good. A few goals. Yeah. yeah. I hope so. Yeah. <laughs>